The Ark of the Covenant, or otherwise known as Tabut as Sakina to the Arabs. What is it? But more importantly, where is it? Who has it? And will it come out at the end of times? Let's have a look, shall we? Hey there guys, just before we get started, um, if you just like and subscribe on my channel, um, it'd be much appreciated and it'll go a long way for me to provide much better content and topics for this channel. Thank you. Dabud al-Sakina or the Ark of the Covenant is an ancient relic from the time of Prophet Musa. Some far and obscure sources say that it was built during the time of Prophet Adam, passed down for generations and eventually ended up in the hands of Prophet Musa. However, the Israelites claim that it was built during the time of Musa. It was built using boxwood or some other sources speculate normal wood and its entire body was covered in gold. But what's more interesting about the Ark isn't the appearance. What's interesting is what the Ark contained inside that made it more precious to so many people. Within the Ark there are many different items, all of which are said to hold some sort of divine power. There's a special food called mansalva, or manna as the Israelites call it. It's a food that was sent down to them by the heaven. According to the Israelites, when this food is ingested, the consumer doesn't defecate. Which is interesting because in Islam it is said that in heaven, when people eat food, they will not urinate or defecate when the food is being ingested, meaning bowel movements will cease to exist. Then there is the staff of Musa his clothes and other personal items which are said to have great power within them. Then there is the Torah, their holy book which is said to be the original one in pristine conditions, as well as the utensils which contain Mansalva. To make sure the Ark was protected, Prophet Dawood constructed a temple which wasn't completed under Prophet Suleiman's time. Once it was completed, the Ark served as a powerful holy vessel for the Israelites and they would often take this into war to defeat their enemies. However, as the time went on, the Israelites fell into corruption, and through the Babylonians, they were punished by God. The Ark was taken away from them. However, it later came into their possession, and they built the temple again the second time. However, they were later attacked the second time and by the Romans, and this time the Ark was taken away, never to be found. However, there have been rumours and conspiracies in the past that have echoed the fact that, that the Ark was found and it's in hiding somewhere or it's actually being hidden for a purpose only to be found when the time is right. One popular theory on the internet is that the Ark is in Ethiopia. According to the theory, Queen Sheba had a son called Menelik after returning from Jerusalem and meeting King Suleiman. It is said that Menelik was his son, so once he became of age, he returned back to Jerusalem to meet his father. Ultimately, after seeing Jerusalem, he decided to go back and choose to stay with his mother. His father, King Solomon, gave him some Jewish scions. The Jewish scions, frustrated that they had to go to Ethiopia, decided to take some souvenirs with them, and that was the Ark. Solomon had tried to get it back but unfortunately it was too late. It seems that the Ark coming with Menelik was a great boon to him as he used the power of the Ark to conquer nearby territories and it's said that the Ark was passed down to his descendants until they kept it inside of a church in Aksum in Ethiopia. The church is called Saint Mary of Zion and it still exists till this very day. There have been people who visited the church and they said that they experienced a sort of strange energy to that church, hinting that it's the Ark that caused it. But no one can verify whether the Ark exists there or not. It could just be something strange going on in the church and they linked it to the Ark. Another theory refers to the Ark still being somewhere in Jerusalem. A Reddit user brought this to light three years ago. Between 1909 and 1911, there was a series of excavations conducted in the Open Mountains near Jerusalem. This was all recorded in a book by a Swedish author called Johan Millen. And Johan coincidentally was also an engineer who led the excavations in the mountains. About 10 years ago, he was contacted by a doctor called Walter from Finland. 
Apparently the doctor had discovered a cipher in the Chaldean Hebrew Bible that gave a weird description of the location of the ark. The location was somewhere in the open mountains of Jerusalem. Apparently what had happened was that between 1909 and 1911 they began an excavation in that precise location and they began making progress recognizing old tunnels which are said to have been paths leading to the ark. However soon after that they were approached by shady men who said that they were sent by the Rothschild and they came with a warning. They wanted him to stop the excavations immediately. It is not known what the conversation was between Johan and the men as the book was in Swedish and didn't really reveal the contents of the conversation but suffice to say that they ignored the warning and carried on the excavations. The next day an Englishman who was the financier of the excavation became sick and was taken to the hospital where the doctor said that he'd been poisoned and will die soon. And what the doctor said came to happen and the man died a few days after. After that the excavations simply stopped. Yet it wasn't just in the open mountains where the excavations were carried out. At the turn of the 20th century and possibly earlier than the Opal Mountain excavation, British Israelites began excavations in the hill of Tara looking for the Ark. And this was in Ireland. However, their excavations were causing so much damage to the nearby infrastructure that they had to be stopped. Nevertheless, there were other excavations carried out in other parts of the world. No one knows whether they actually found it, but everyone claims it happened. But here's the thing that everyone knows, and it's that it'll be found in the right time. Even famous scholars such as Imam Suyuti say this. He reads a narration from Suleiman ibn Isa which says, It has reached to me that at the hands of the Mahdi, the Tabut as sakina the Ark of the Covenant, will appear from the lake of Tabarriya, Sea of Galilee in Israel, until it is carried and placed before him in Beit al -Maqdus. When the Jews will look at it, they will all become Muslims except for a small number of them. Then the Mahdi will die sometime after. Now I don't know how the Ark ended up in the Sea of Galilee. It could be that it's always been there in the water. And that's probably where they've hid it during the times that they've been attacked. Or they might have discovered it somewhere else in the world and accidentally dropped it on the sea on the way to Israel. So it's all really up for discussion on what's it doing in the Sea of Galilee. However, one thing we know for certain is that when they build the third temple, like they did with the previous temples, they will allocate a certain room for the Ark. It's one of the major purposes of building the third temple, other than it being a palace for the Masiha at the Jar. Thank you for watching. This is Mystical Middle East Mythos. Take care.